What's going on, everyone? It is the first day of spring football practice, so I felt like we should talk about it a little bit. I'm going to go through some of the certain storylines that I really want to focus on as spring ball gets started today, talk about the roster a little bit, some of the news information that I have um, going into camp. Uh, this season. It should be a really fun one. And I think first and foremost, where I want to start with this is just the simple fact that this team needs to get back to a point where they're playing with a lot of confidence, where, you know, the concerns from last year, as far as the locker room having issues and just this, this entire mindset that Dave Randa talked about, as far as them having problems with leadership and them really just not playing with, as Scott Drew likes to say, joy. And, And I think that this spring gives them an opportunity to get back to that. I think that's something that Dave Aranda and the staff are going to focus on a whole lot this spring, and it might be the most important factor uh, as we go through spring football, even though I know a lot of people want to talk about the quarterback position, of course. Um, So let's talk about it, right? So Sawyer Robertson, Blake Shapin, those are the two guys that I think everyone's talking about as far as competing for the starting quarterback job. Mississippi State transfer Sawyer Robertson, uh, he was a big-time target. Uh, for Sean Bell, Jeff Grimes, for this entire staff. The moment he entered the portal was the moment that Baylor really went hard in targeting him. Um, And they won a battle. You know, there's no doubt about it. Sean Bell won a battle against TCU for Sawyer Robertson. They got him on campus. Now he's going to compete against Blake Shapin, who, as we all know, had a great in to the year that Baylor won the Sugar Bowl. You know, that 2021 season when he played in that Big 12 championship game, he played amazing. Played great football, got injured in that game, came back last season, and the team just wasn't as good, and he had some issues. And just being honest about it, he had issues turning the ball over, especially turning the ball over at inopportune times, and the efficiency part of it. When Baylor needed a first down or they needed a play from him, a lot of the times he did not come through. And so I think it's also important to remember this was his first year as a starter. So this year there should be... Reasons for confidence, I think, in Blake Shape and taking a step in the right direction. But also, another reason for it is the competition and the push he's going to get from Sawyer Robertson. And then they also brought in Northern Arizona transfer R.J. Martinez, uh, who played really, really good football at Northern Arizona. Uh, I know it's not in the FBS level. It's an FCS school, but still put up great stats and should also be there to add some depth and also um, some competency at the quarterback position at the third string spot. He's a very, very good one to have at that position. Let's dive into some of the other transfers. I think that's another area that everyone's going to be talking about heading into the spring. So here's the list. We mentioned Sora Robertson, Mississippi State quarterback, Northern Arizona quarterback, RJ Martinez. He's a walk-on. BYU uh, offense lineman Campbell Barrington and Clark Barrington, Arkansas wide receiver Keetron Jackson, North Texas tight end Jake Roberts, Oklahoma State running back Dom Richardson, Miami cornerback uh, Isaiah Dunson, Liberty linebacker Mike Smith, and then Michigan State kicker Jack Stone, who is also a walk-on. So a lot of names there, a lot of guys to focus on. Uh, A couple that I need to bring up from this group, Keetron Jackson. Baylor really needs a wide receiver to step up this year. I think everyone feels pretty good about Monterey Baldwin. I think we've seen enough from him when he's healthy uh, that he's going to be very productive. Um, I am betting on Hal Presley and Jordan Neighbors to be very good football players eventually. I think that step happens this year. I think both look far better than they did a season ago. But I think Keetron Jackson is going to be the guy on the outside. I'm expecting a big year from the Arkansas transfer. Arkansas wanted him back. He was going to be their wide receiver one this year, and instead he elected to leave. Baylor looked at him, said, hey, this is the guy that we want. Of all the wide receivers in the transfer portal, he's the one, went out, won a recruiting battle against Arkansas to get him to Baylor, which is where he should have ended up uh, in his initial recruitment anyways. I'm expecting big things from him. Uh, Another name, obviously, the Barrington brothers. Big time, big time gets for this Baylor staff. Eric Mateos, Jeff Grimes, both knew them pretty well. Uh, They have a lot to replace on the offense line. We know that. I mean, it's a complete overhaul up front. So bringing in two guys that are older, have a lot of experience, and are guys that I think are going to bring a leadership quality that that group was frankly kind of missing last year at times. So I think both of them are going to be big factors as well. Uh, moving on to the offensive line. So a lot of guys to replace up front. 
Um, so now you're looking at the Barrington brothers, um, Gavin Byers, and kind of how I see this playing out. I think Campbell is going to start at left tackle. And I think Gavin Byers is going to start at one of the guard positions. And then you have Clark. Uh, Clark is very versatile. He could play uh, guard um, or he could play center. Now, center is the position that I think Baylor has to address, whether it's in the transfer portal or with guys on the roster, which makes me think that Clark could be a candidate uh, to play center this upcoming year if they don't add anyone else. If they do add someone else, then I could see him playing guard. Either way, he can play either at a very, very high level, but it gives them time uh, to kind of let Timothy Dawn really get better and better. He's going to be the future of the center position, but for this year, it would be nice to have one more year of him developing instead of having to start right away. Outside of those guys, you got guys like Caden Siraki, Elijah Ellis, Tate Williams. You know, you got guys that could step up and play a huge role, but we're going to need to see big springs from them. Uh, Alvin Ebosele is another guy that I'm definitely focused on um, and looking at. You also have reinforcements when the fall comes, especially with four-star prospect Sean Tompkins. Uh, he's a guy who I could see coming in right away and potentially contributing on the offensive line. But in general, hanging into this spring, a lot of things to figure out. But I do think there are at least three starters locked in with the Barrington brothers and Gavin Byers. Uh, moving on to the next kind of segment I want to talk about is position changes. So Kyan Roberts Day is making the move from running back to the Jack linebacker position. Um, this is a great move for him, especially at this point in his career. He's already up to, you know, 200. He hovers basically between 255 and 275 pounds. That's just too much to be playing the running back spot. Uh, so with him moving to Jack, weighing around 260 pounds, that's a great weight for him. And I think he could be a factor this upcoming season, whereas at running back, he would have just been kind of sitting there. And when you get a high-level recruit like this and a high-level athlete, you got to figure out a way to utilize them and get them on the field and get them to develop properly. And I think this is going to be a great move for Kyan Roberts Day in that regard. Uh, Jackie Marshall. We saw him at Jack last year. He's moving to defensive line. He's already 281 pounds. He might get all the way up to 290 by the time the season starts. Uh, just naturally a very big and athletic uh, guy who, coming out of high school, he literally was an athletic freak. When you turn on the tape, he's out there returning punts for touchdowns at 260 pounds. It's just kind of mind-blowing what this guy can do. I think he's going to bring a lot of depth to the defensive line. Obviously, they get Gabe Hall, they get TJ Franklin back, but adding a guy like him to be kind of one of those guys that comes in and out, we've seen them play, you know, six, seven, eight defense linemen at a time in any given game. I think he's going to be a big factor for them up front. And then the other one is Bryson Jackson. He's coming back. He's going to be playing the star position, it seems. It seems like that's going to be a move for him. Um, and it, it will get his playmaking uh, on the field a little bit more. Um, he's a very good player. You see him rush the passer at a very high level. Now, if he does move to the star, we're just going to see how does he hold up in coverage and just some of those little nuances that we saw Jalen Petrie really excel at. Can Bryson do that? We'll see, but the good news is he's going to have great leadership. He's going to bring that to the field. And again, that pass rushing ability is something very unique that he definitely has. We're going to be following some other position changes potentially, especially in the secondary. Um, so we'll see if guys move around from whether it's from cornerback to safety or safety to uh, cornerback. I think there's going to be a lot of movement there as well. So let's talk about the defensive back position really quick before we wrap things up. Uh, Devin Lemire will likely be out this spring. He's dealing with a shoulder injury. He had surgery uh, a little bit after their bowl loss to Air Force. I don't know if you watched that game, but he was clearly laboring out there. Had to get surgery. So he's going to be out this spring doing more individual stuff. And he was their only returning guy who started at safety. They lost Devin Neal, who transferred to Louisville. They lost Al Walcott, who transferred to Arkansas. Christian Morgan is done. He's out of eligibility. Who are they going to turn to? And that's what makes this position so fascinating to me because there's just all these young guys that are on this roster, and they didn't add any transfers to the safety room. So you're basically looking at a group that consists of Alfonso Allen, who's obviously a very good prospect, played some star last year. I uh, got to see him on the field some. Uh, Devin Bobby, who played some last year as a freshman. 
And then you have guys like Corey Gordon, who I think is going to be taking a huge step this spring. I think he's one of the guys that you're going to see a lot of momentum coming out of spring as far as, hey, this guy might be competing to be a starter for this roster, and maybe we didn't talk about him that much prior to this. But as a recruit, I remember a lot of people talking about how athletic he was and how if that translates to the field quicker than anticipated, he's going to be very good. And I remember watching his highlight film And it was one of the most bizarre things because you saw the score of his team. They were losing games, and and I'm not kidding. They lost probably every other week like 56-7. to They were just not a good football team, but you turned on the tape. The guy was doing everything for his high school football team, and you just saw those athletic traits. I continue to hear that that is translating to the football field, and if so, he could be a huge riser this spring. Al Allen, Devin Bobby, two guys that I think are very solid and could earn quite a bit of playing time this year as well. Um, Cisco Caston is another guy to obviously focus on. But with Devin Lemire out, there's going to be a ton of opportunities for the staff to evaluate these guys and also for the staff to kind of sit back and go, okay, do we need to transfer safety or are we good with these young guys? And can we just roll out with this group of young guys? We'll see. Definitely a risk and definitely something that needs to be answered this spring. Cornerback, another area to, to kind of mention. I mentioned Isaiah Dunson coming from Miami. He'll likely start at one of the cornerback spots. Then you have guys like A.J. McCarty, Chateau Reed, um, potentially you know mixing in at cornerback. Uh, maybe a guy moves to cornerback like a Romario Noel. I think in general, uh, Matthew Pallage's system is one where they would like to get more physical on the perimeter and play closer to the line scrimmage with bigger, longer, rangier cornerbacks. And so I think some more size outside is something that they're definitely going to prioritize heading into this spring. Pay attention to Reggie Bush. He's a guy who I really liked coming out of high school, a four-star prospect in my model, and a guy who I think is going to be a very, very productive Baylor Bear at some point. Question is, is he ready or not? So that's it. That's a quick preview of the spring. Very excited for today. A lot of the Sikkim 365 staff is going to be out on the field, um, including myself. We'll get to see uh, this new Baylor football team for the first time. Very excited, and we will keep you updated. Be sure to check out Sikkim 365 Premium. We're going to have all kinds of insider notes, premium coverage of spring football all the way up into the spring football game. So be locked in and prepared for that. But thanks for listening today. This has been Grayson Grunhafer on Sikkim365.com.